Thank you. We're going to call this meeting to order now. It is 6.33 on Mar uh, March 23rd, 2023. And this is a public meeting of the City of Portland's Police Accountability Commission Subcommittee on Reporting and Transparency. If the Spanish language interpre interpreter, Sacha Maria, can give the information on Spanish interpretation, please. Esta es una junta pública sujeta a las leyes del estado de Oregon y la administración y las reglas de la administración de la ciudad de Portland y va a ser grabada. Va a haber interpretación al lenguaje de español disponible en esta junta. Cuando usted vaya a accesar la interpretación de español, usted va a ver que hay video, pero el audio va a ser escuchado en español. Para poder accesar la interpretación en español, debe ir a la parte de abajo, va a ver el icono del globo, pulsa el icono del globo, aprieta e interpretación y luego español y ahí puede escuchar el, el, la interpretación gracias thank you the city also offers ASL interpretation which is being provided by Mary and Christine please pin their meet, video feed to see their interpretation throughout the meeting the closed captioning is turned on in Zoom as another means of assistance. Please note that this is an automatic captioning service and is not always accurate. The city supports access to meetings of the Police Accountability Commission and can provide other language support as well. Please email in advance of future public meetings, either as a response to public meetings notice or directly to policeaccountability at portlandoregon.gov to ask for other access assistance, including interpretation in other language languages. <clears throat> this meeting is a public meeting subject to City of Portland's Administrative Code and Oregon State Law and is being recorded. For this meeting, the chat functions is enabled for commission members to communicate with each other. Members of the public will be able to ask questions using Zoom's Q&A feature. As the commissioners are presenting and or discussing things, if attendees have questions, please feel free to submit them through the Q&A. We hope to use this feature to help guide our conversation during the meeting and future meetings, meeting agenda topics. We like to be clear that not all questions will be answered during the meeting, but if answered, both the question and answer will be visible to you and will be, become part of the meeting rec record. To access this feature, just click on the Q&A icon in the middle of your screen. I will now pass it over to our co-chair um, to give the land acknowledgement. Thank you, Ayamide. Um, <clears throat> the PAC currently uses the land acknowledgement on display at City Hall, which is the following. We acknowledge that the rivers, lakes, streams, and lands of the lower Willamette River rest upon the occupied terries, uh, territories of the Multnomah, Wasco, Cowlitz, Kathlamet, Clackamas, Chinook, Tualatin, Kalapuya, Malala, and many other tribes. We recognize the many villages, traditions, cultures, and relationships that existed along the river since time immemorial. We recognize these tribes stewarded these lands and rivers since time immemorial for future generations. We recognize and undertake responsibility for the destruction of the river and the land, of traditional food sources, sacred places, and multifaceted ways of life. We acknowledge the economic and social values that enabled the harm to the river, including systemic racism, classism, and other systems of oppression that perpetuated harm against Black, Indigenous, and immigrant communities along the river. With this acknowledgement, we commit to honoring and learning from the past and working towards a more equitable and sustainable future for the Lower Willamette River. We commit to seeking solutions that acknowledge the inequities of past socioeconomic policies and the harm done to people and our relationships to these lands and waters. And with that, I turn it back to the facilitators. Thank you, Commissioner Hani. Um, can we get the um, slideshow back up, please? Thank you. So we'll take a moment to read the first part, if you could go to page three. 
Thank you. We'll read the first part of our community agreements. And then we can go to the next slide. Do we all commit to following the community agreements for today's meeting and gently calling in our colleagues and collaborators if needed? Okay, great. Thank you. I will now pass it over to the co-chairs to discuss the timeline and we'll need the slides back up for that. I'm coming, I just have to find my place. Okay. <laughs> uh, whoops, oh, hold on, I gotta get back to the, um, okay. This meeting is a part of the Police Accountability Commission structure and details phase of work which focuses on the form of the new system. Future phases of work will develop how the new system relates to the rest of the city government and the transition plan from our current system to the new one. <clears throat> the commission will work until August 31st, 2023 and will present all proposed changes to the city council for their consideration and approval. This slide shows the outcome documents for the structure and details phase. Based on the agenda and scope approved by the commission, this subcommittee, oh, I'm sorry, thought that was a comma, uh, based on the agenda and scope approved by the commission. This subcommittee focuses on, focuses on how the new oversight board and accountability system will report to city council and the public and ensure transparency in its work. Next slide is the current project plan for the structure and details phase of the Police Accountability Commission's work. It will be updated as needed throughout this phase of work. This slide is for members of the public to be able to understand how the commission gets from now through the end of the phase, which focuses on identifying areas of agreement among commission members as to the form the new system will take. Today's meeting is part of the gold box with the red border near the bottom of the screen. And then next on slide 10, following today, here are the upcoming meetings of the PAC we'd like to highlight. This is the last confirmed subcommittee meeting. If the subcommittee does not finish this work today, there will be one more meeting next Tuesday, March 28th. The next full commission meeting is March is Thursday, March 30th. We will have another full commission meeting on Thursday, April 13th, which will include a briefing with Commissioner Renee Gonzalez. And today, the purpose of today's meeting, today's meeting agenda includes co-chairs walkthrough of the updates to the draft, then an open discussion on the draft PAC areas of agreement on reporting and transparency. We are hoping to conclude discussions today on the document and refer it to the full commission for its consideration. That decision to refer will also include public comment. And then, um, thank wait, you. Am I done? Yes, thank yes. you. Thank you, <laughs> Ayumide. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> So this is a time for co-chairs to explain the updates to the draft. We usually, um, we actually discuss the text in the next section. So this is a general overview. Co-chairs, would you like to quickly describe the updates in the draft since our last, oh, last sure. time we looked at this document? Yes, so we took the um, document as it was at our last meeting and kind of, um, you know, uh, uh, worked on uh, the all the comments that we got, kind of reordered things, and um, Samir has done some formatting. So hopefully it's, um, you know, it, it's, it's getting to be in pretty good shape. And so tonight we'll go through and, um, you know, see 
read it all, see how what we like about it and if what needs to be fixed. And if we get through the whole thing tonight, then we can pass it on to the full TAC for their approval and consideration. I mean, they got to think about it too. So, so that's the plan. All right, thank you. Okay, so let's move on to discussion. We will now move to discussing the draft areas of agreement on reporting and, tra and transparency and walk through the outline document and some of other and some other resources as we do. A decision on this document is expected today. We ask you to follow normal discussion rules. Please be brief with each time you speak, even though you can speak multiple times, please be facilitated. Remember that I will be using a weighted stack um, in our discussion. Finally, please be forward thinking in your comments and uh, I'll just have the co-chair start. And I believe we're going to be starting at the top of this document. Okay, yes. Yeah, so you see there's a table of contents. And then we're going to just start into the introduction here. Um, at the last meeting, we decided it'd be a good idea to have a uh, introduction talking about the importance of transparency. And so Connie uh, got that going. And so I'm going to read through it now. Transparency is about the public's right to know the public's business. The Police Accountability Commission understands and uplifts the importance of transparency. Transparency builds trust. Whoops. Uh, let's see where. Sorry about that. Trust between the agencies and the community. Transparency allows for the community to be engaged and support the work and evolution of the agencies. Transparency ensures that police the state and governing bodies are held accountable and actionable to the community standards. Transparency invites all to participate and have access to the work and issues at hand. So I'm just gonna, oh, okay, we're gonna go put the black box around it. Okay, and then I'll, I'll read this next paragraph and then we can pause and think about if there's anything you wanna change. Um, the Police Accountability Commission identified several barriers to police accountability in Portland in 2022, including that, quote, there is a current perception by both community members and law enforcement that the accountability system is opaque, unfair, and unjust. Okay, so does anybody have any questions, comments, or suggestions on this particular section I just read? I see no, I see a thumbs up from um, Christian and I believe Connie. Yeah, I, I wrote some of that, yeah, so I, I'm good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, okay, just want to get that on the record. So I think we're good to go on to the next section. Okay, next section. Oh, oh, whoops, yeah, there it is. Okay, so uh, by design, the lack of transparency bleeds into the inability to monitor for effectiveness, improvement, or challenges. The data that are available are limited and do not summarize the impact made to accountability. The PAC also considered the National Association for Civilian Oversight of Law Enforcement's observation that state laws already afford extraordinary protections to law enforcement officers and conceal extensive information regarding their work from the public. And NACOL's recommendation for oversight independence, including that oversight bodies not keep secrets for law enforcement. Um, okay, so let's pause and comment on that because the next thing is sort of a, um, a different thought. Any. Um, comments, questions, or suggestions on, on this particular area here? Um, um, Commissioner Christian, Ooh, I couldn't talk for a second. Sorry no about that. All good. <laughs> um, uh, Uh, I think everything is good. I got tripped up a little bit at the end when it says oversight bodies dot 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 not keep secrets for law enforcement. I feel like I understand that, but I could see that being confusing to someone who doesn't have the context. I don't know if maybe we want to add like a do in there or should not keep secrets for law enforcement. I know that's paraphrasing. I'm just curious if anyone else has thoughts on how to 
make that smoother maybe. That makes sense to me. Uh, Connie, how about you? Uh, okay with that? Sure. Okay, good. Are there any other um, proposed changes or text changes to this section before we uh, get this all put in here properly? Okay. Okay, so um, is there any opposition to the word should being added to this? Um, um, no. Section? Um, is there a general agreement to changing the or adding shape, the word should? Okay, yes, yes, yes. Okay, thank you. Okay. Uh, moving on. Okay. Um, oh, yeah. Now we're up to the city council mandated. Yeah. So we need to go a little further up. Can we? Can we move on? Yeah. I, they they told me to move on. <laughs> so I just I, I they were ready. They were like, let's go. Move so, on. Move on. Move on. Okay. We're, yes. we're trying to get through this document. So let's be. <laughs> the city council mandated that the. Uh, Oh, there's something wrong with this. Yeah, um, that the I think it's the Police Accountability Commission define uh, number one organizational details. Appointment of a director and professional staff are required by the Charter Amendment. Other details are required about how the system will be set up. And um, I think this number seven. Oh, this is something else the city council mandated, I'm pretty sure. Transparency of the process. When will reports come back to council? How will they be made? And what will they contain? Will reports be made public? When will meetings be open to the public? And what information about individual investigations will be available to the public? So that's, we don't need to approve that. That's just a quote from, uh, at least I think, unless I'm, please correct me if I'm wrong. That just comes out of those resolutions and everything telling us what to do. Okay, sounds good. Okay, so I'll move on to the next paragraph. The commission's recommendations, if implemented, uh, will improve upon the current system by ensuring transparency in meetings, public ability to give input before decisions are made, regular reporting, access for the public to information about policing and police accountability, including raw data, and confidentiality were necessary for safety. So anybody have any uh, questions or comments or suggestions about that paragraph? Okay. Are there any proposed text changes to this section? Okay. All right, can we move on? All right, yes. let's go. <laughs> okay, section A. Transparency in meetings and hearings. All meetings of the oversight board shall be open to the public, except when otherwise required. Meetings and hearings of the oversight board shall be subject to Oregon Public Meetings Law, ORS 192.610 through 192.710. Proper notice agendas, meeting summaries, and meeting materials will be made available to the public in a timely way. Public participation in meetings. Meetings of the Oversight Board will be open to the public and offer time for public comment. Meetings and hearings will be held publicly and allow for community input. Public comment will be allowed at a minimum before key decisions are made. Any questions, comments, or suggestions about this particular two paragraphs? Nope. I think we can keep rolling until... Good. Yeah. Okay. So no proposed... I have to ask the question. No proposed text changes to this section. No. Okay. Uh, section A and A1, particularly, and yeah. can we can move on to A2 now. Okay. Oversight Board Support for Policing and Accountability Transparency. The Oversight Board will meet regularly with the staff director, including during public meetings. The Oversight Board will regularly host the chief of police, mayor, and other relevant officials at its public meetings. The agency director will provide written updates at each full oversight board meeting 
with information on the status of agency investigations and of those conducted by the police bureau, if any. Any questions, comments on this section? Okay. Um, are there any proposed tech changes in this section? No. I see no. Oh, um, staff. Yeah, so just a quickly uh, note for anyone who's watching, um, you know, the, the, the staff will, the generic term agency is being used right now, just while the, the particular nature of that staff unit that reports to the oversight board is being figured out in another subcommittee. So that term may be changed later on, just in case anyone's watching along and a little bit uh, confused by the use of that term agency. Um, thanks. Okay. Section B. Okay, thanks. Reporting to the public and, and city council. Regular reporting to city council. The oversight board and agency will publish a written annual report with executive summary by a consistent date each year. The report will be presented at a public oversight board meeting with public comment and questions encouraged. Annual reports will also be presented at a public city council session with oral testimony accepted. The oversight board may also issue quarterly reports. The board shall hire a qualified staff member, a team or independent experts to review closed investigations pertaining to officer involved shootings and deaths in custody on an ongoing basis. The completed review shall be described in periodic reports available to the public and include case and investigative summaries, policy implications, recommendations for improvements in police and oversight board policies and practices. These reports will be presented to the public and city council. Oral testimony will be accepted at city council sessions. Okay, so any questions, comments, or suggestions on this particular section? Okay, I see no. Um, there are track changes. Let's see. So the track change is the oversight board may issue quarterly reports. Um, so is there any strong opposition to this um, track change? Okay, is there general agreement of this particular track change? Yes. Yes, yes. Okay, great. Okay, we can, can we move on from that? Okay, fabulous. Um, wonderful. And then this section here. Is there general opposition to this, the addition of this section? Is there general agreement to add to this section? Okay. Okay, we can move on. Can we move on? Okay. Yes. Thank so you. Just a quick request from the city attorney's office. If you can just hold the, when we do the, is there general agreement? If you can just hold that for a little bit longer, I wanna okay. make sure that the video gets it. That's what they've asked us to do. Okay, wonderful. And also if I could, Connie, if you could use your, um, like the, reaction so I can see your hand or something because I don't hear your voice every time um, that would be make it you easier. just said in the chat that I don't need to vote so I that's what I was following oh well you have to vote for when there's track changes just not when um, um when we're just going over the the stuff that's just general and there's no track changes so so then I just noticed in the Q&A the question was was that passage just above Oh no! Here it is. This pink passage. Yeah. Uh, it, it, does that require uh, apply to the um, pertain? I mean, to the deadly force case reviews, and the answer is yes. Um, oh, that's right. We were going to add that thing about or deadly force that doesn't result in death. Uh, that's Samir. It's in my passage in it uh, in my version of it because it 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 pertains to the there was a uh instance in the the most recent oir report about a chokehold that was uh used and they 
you know, they they reviewed the case. The person didn't die, and so that's why I thought it would be a good idea to add that to this little list in the first paragraph. So just a moment, I'll grab that. Make a note that's of here. that, or, or if you want to just do it right now, that's fine too. But um, yeah, that was something that we had intended to add to this. And maybe we want to even go, I don't, maybe we're not allowed to, but might want to go back to structural oversight and fix it there too. Not this minute, I just mean that at some point. And <laughs> your hand it. was up for something to um, staff? Yeah. Um... Just to clarify, and just to, um, as as this is coming in, this this earlier part is exactly the text that's in the structural oversight document. Um, whereas, and so the reason that there's it's separated out and this the separate line was not highlighted for that particular request for consensus is just because that was from a different location. Um, right, so I, and I forgot when we decided to move it that I had added that thing about this other type of. Uh, thing that the experts might review. And so there it is now. Thank you for putting it there. Okay, so now that this has been changed, I have to go over it again, just to make sure that we have um, consensus. Um, so is there any strong opposition to the addition of death in custody and use of deadly force that do not result in death on an ongoing basis to this section of the document. Okay, I see no, no from, and a hand up, hand raised. I'm assuming that's a no from you, Connie, like Commissioner Connie. Um, is that correct? Commissioner Connie? Yes. Okay, thank you. All right. Um, general agreement. Is there general agreement? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, okay, we can move on. This next section also requires a vote. Um, and this, it says in the notes, this is not, okay, this is from, okay. This report will be presented to public and city council. Oral testimony will be accepted at city council sessions. Is this okay to keep? Okay. Um, I see waving hands. I see nodding at the heads. And with Connie, is there a thumbs up? So just, just to well, clarify, if we're just asking for opposition, we don't need it. <laughs> um, we don't need a, a visual display of anything. It's okay. just the absence of it. So um so if it's, i just want to make sure because of making sure that we're documenting everything yeah so it's only when, when silent, we stop this, it's okay when we, when we stop the screen share we need to see at least two people make a visual signal effectively okay. is how the commission has interpreted consensus okay wonderful yay okay so then well i'll, I'll quit picking on you connie i'm sorry <laughs> okay um and is there a general agreement Thank you. Can we move on? Yes. Thank you. Okay, so now I think what I'll do on this section is um, they're they're divided up into sections. So I'll read one section and ask if uh, if uh, you know if anybody's questions or comments. So the, to keep in mind is these are the things right now on this list that we are suggesting um, be mandated as contents in this mandated annual report. So if there's anything that you see in here that you think doesn't belong, say so. If there's anything that we miss, say that too. So that's the, you know, kind of the goal of this particular part of the discussion. Okay, so the annual report, just picture it, uh, overview, overview of the accountability system, vision, mission, and values, message from the board, leadership or officers, whatever it turns out to be, a uh, message from the executive director. So any, any additions or subtractions or changes to that little set right there? <laughs> okay. I think it's okay to move on. Um, about the oversight board and agency. 
duties and powers of oversight board, processes, procedures, and definitions relevant to the agency's work, such as how complaints are processed and adjudicated, stages of complaint handling, member biographies, agency staff, training and professional development, organizational structure, board activities, summary of committee work. Is there more in this section? No. Um, there's not. Okay, good. So any uh, things that you think should be changed, added, subtracted in this particular set? Well, Commissioner Krista. Thanks. Um, mm, mm, mm. I was gonna say maybe we maybe add a um, like where to find out more, um, but I don't know if that actually is necessary for reports as I'm thinking about it, because I don't know in what context these will be viewed if they're being presented to council. Um, I don't know if a member of the public would want to find like where to find out more, but they're probably finding this already on the where to find out more place. So maybe oh. never mind. <laughs> right. Well, so I mean, I picture this as being something, you know, being online, you know, 50 page report. I mean, I think it might not hurt to put in a page that says, you know, if you want to know more, you know, here are the links or something like that. Yeah. Um, so um, yeah, if we could add another point saying something about, um, information uh list of additional information or lists of additional resources or something like that what do you does that kind of what you're thinking christian actually yeah i think the word resources matches it pretty well i feel like um yeah, yeah. okay thanks <laughs> okay thanks okay so there's a track change so you're changing duties and powers to information and resources about. I think we still need duties and powers. So just make a second point, I think. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, that's so, that's what I thought you had said, but I want. Yeah. 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 Different. Perfect. Okay. That's yeah. That makes more sense. I think it makes more sense. How about um, Christian and Connie? If you have okay, good. Thanks. Okay, so we will. Um, so there is there general is there any strong opposition to the addition of information and resources about the oversight board? Okay. Um, and is there general agreement? Wonderful. Okay, we have consensus. And um, can we move on from this section? Yes, please. Okay, so we can go to section C. Just a quick question. Last time we had this um, subcommittee's, the last subcommittee meeting, there was a uh, question about uh, what training and professional development was supposed to capture in there. And it, we kind of got off of it and um, just wanted to ask if, if uh, whoever had put that in could clarify, like was the idea to, what, what the, yeah, what the idea of that was. I think I I think this came out of you know some other I can't remember what the source is. Um, I mean I don't think anybody made it up, but I think this would just be a list of okay. So we sent the board, we sent three board members to NAPOL meeting. We um, the the staff got um, civil rights training. So you kind of just have a list of all the different trainings and you know. Uh, I remember the in the last few years they had, I think it was the Department of Justice or somebody, oh maybe they hired the OIR group, gave uh, the um gave the uh IPR investigators and the internal affairs investigators some training on how to conduct good investigations. So you know, you would just kind of have a whole list of what what kinds of things they did in a year, because this is just supposed to capture the activities um, of the whole um system and that would be one thing that be interesting for people to know that oh good our staff went out and got this kind of training and the board went off and got that or they went to this um uh convention or whatever you want to call it, you know whatever they call those the things where you go and hang out with all the people who uh like the nate bold things so thank you i think so that was that was the that. thought yeah thank you for clarifying that uh-huh Okay, next section, policy. 
policy recommendations related to policies and practices, collective bargaining agreements, city ordinances, and state law. Their stat, uh, maybe it'd be better to say the, the status and out, wait, no, okay, something's wrong here. The status and out, yeah, the status and outcomes of any previous recommendations or any that have not been implemented, the reasons why. Um, analysis of closed cases for policy implications. Okay. Uh, um, Commissioner Christian. Thank you. Um, it, for me, it comes to mind, um, we don't have to add this if others don't agree, but I one thing that pops into me is um, having a section for a potential section for policies that um, have been continually recommended and not um, uh, applied. Um, I don't know why I feel like that would be really good to highlight because I'm sure there will be ones that will just have a, a lot of pushback and resistance to and it would be really good to set some time aside to like, why are these specifically not being adopted, even though we've recommended them multiple, multiple times. Um, so that it's, uh, yeah, does that make sense? I don't know if that makes sense. That makes sense to me. <laughs> yeah. And I think somewhere where we put that the footnote to that Seattle recommendation tracker example um is that idea there um Samir um oh the dashboards yes so one of the ideas was to have on the dashboard because this is what they do in Seattle they have all the recommendations they've made who they made them to um you know, where there's, you know, where they stand, why they haven't been implemented, if they have been implemented. And so um, I think we're, um, there's the footnote, uh, number nine down there. Um, I don't see what it connects to, but it's, um, oh, it's at the very top where it says dashboards, the heading, right? Um, do you, would you like to get that thought in the, what's in the annual report as well, um, Christian? Um, Sure. Yeah. Okay. In case it's going to counselor or whatnot, I feel like it'd be good to get yeah. in front of the uh, leadership okay. eyes. So status and outcomes of any previous recommendations and maybe reason for non-implementation. That's not a word, I don't think, but uh, oh, the reasons why. So does that feel like it covers it? If you look at those two points in the middle, Sorry, I'm trying to think about phrasing. Um, oh yeah, I know it's kind of awkward. Status and outcomes. Maybe like a or like discussion of ongoing issues that have not been addressed or ongoing policy issues that have not been addressed. Does that make sense? Something like that. Like on, I think ongoing is the is the key word that I'm trying to get at. Things that are like consistently a problem that have not been um, persistent. Maybe persistent. Yeah, persistent could be good. Um, I see staff's hand up. Yeah, just to clarify with Commissioner Christian, are you saying not been addressed by the council or not been addressed by? Yeah, sorry. Person? Yeah, yeah. To clarify, um, ones that the future oversight board would have been um, suggesting or. Um, proposing policy changes to address like an issue that the, the oversight board has been suggesting multiple times to address um but that council has not adopted or that the police bureau hasn't adopted for whatever reason um i just feel like if it's th this is basically just a contingency so that um if there is something that continually hasn't been addressed and and it seems to be keep getting keep getting pushed off i feel like it would be good to have a section to be able to address the fact that it keeps getting pushed off because otherwise it's like if you're just saying the reasons every single time um I don't know, I guess maybe maybe it's a language thing. Maybe that's what I'm coming up against. Does that make sense? I don't know if I'm, I hope I'm not just rambling, <laughs> sorry. That that does make sense. Uh, my question was just to see if it was captured in uh, in the this particular point or or not, um, but, and to see if there, because if it was by the oversight board, there would be a different, that would probably need to live in a different place, but yeah. Could you add with the, emphasis or highlighting in particular uh, persistent um, uh, 
or unaddressed recommendations. Uh, you know, that ones good. that, yeah. That sounds great. Thank you. Yes. Okay. You like that? Okay, Christian. Okay. Good. All right. Okay. So, so now, yeah. So okay. So recommendations wasn't a track change, correct? As I just want to make sure there's like for That's any recommendations. Effectively typographical. That was typographical. Uh, we could, I, I mean, well, you could combine them though. Yeah, I was going to just that's why I was double checking. So the for any recommendations that are that have not been implemented, the reason with an emphasis on persistent issues not yet addressed by PPB and the city council. Is there any strong opposition to this this proposed language for this section? Is there general consensus? Okay, fabulous. Okay, we're moving okay. on to the next section. Um, next section, complaints of alleged officer misconduct. Complaints by year, quarter, allegations by unit type, employees named in complaints to the extent allowed by law and policy, information regarding uniformed personnel who were the subject of multiple complaints, complainants who filed multiple complaints, and issues that were raised by multiple complaints to the extent allowed by law and policy. The number of named employees who have received two or more sustained complaints within one year to the extent allowed by law and policy. Cases, allegations, officer and complainant demographics disaggregated by geographic area, investigations, full, expedited, et cetera, findings, overturn findings, discipline imposed. Okay. Oh, go ahead. Uh, oh, media, I'm sorry. Oh, no, it's okay. I was oh. just going to say. Are there any proposed text changes to this section? But I know you were going to ask if there are any questions. So, hey, I think not. Okay, can we move on? Yes. All right. Okay, so then the next section uh, the number and percentage of cases that were appealed or grieved, and the number and percentage of these cases in which findings and or discipline determinations were changed and the nature of those changes. The number and percentage of all complaints handled directly by frontline supervisors referred for supervisor action, management action, training, or alternative resolution. The number of times a bureau employee failed to comply with the agency's request for an interview or for the production of documents and the number of times a bureau sworn employee failed to comply with a valid subpoena and whether discipline was imposed for any such non-compliance. The number, nature, and settlement amount of civil suits against Portland Police Bureau officers, regardless of whether the city is a defendant in the litigation, and that footnote refers to the fact that this comes out of the, the current settlement agreement between the Department of Justice and uh, the city of Portland. Uh, Let's see, where am I? Uh, okay. Oh, there it is. Okay, timeliness of complaint resolution, redacted case summaries, and that captures that. It's in this box right now. So um, any uh, questions, concerns, or suggestions for change? So, I, so we can scroll up a little bit more before we ask. Oh, and I can get that. Yeah, we can mm -hmm. do the rest of this in this section. Yeah. Okay, let's see. I was at... Board actions by case number, date, and findings. Trends related to member history and complaint type, as well as frequency, consistency, and adequacy of discipline imposed. Overall patterns and trends, death cases, mediation. Any questions, concerns, additions to this? the rest of this list uh, in this section? I don't see any. So for um, the section, the whole section, which is complaints, complainants, uh, uh, complaints of allegations of officer misconduct, are there any proposed text changes in this section? It's quite a long section, so I just want to make sure. 
Okay, I see no. All right. Um, can we move on to the next section? And there's a yes. So. Okay, and then the last bit uh, is outreach status and satisfaction. So information on outreach efforts, including feedback received at community events, engagement with the public and with the police bureau. And then the last thing, complainant satisfaction survey results should be included in the annual report. So anybody have any questions, concerns, additions to the rest of this? Okay, me neither. Um, are there any proposed text changes to this section? <laughs> okay, I didn't think so. Can we move on to um, section B3? Can I ask one quick thing? I noticed in the uh, chat that, not the chat, the other thing, the Q&A, if we go back up to the place where the, uh, yes, the, where this section where the board shall hire a qualified staff member, um, yes, these deadly force reports, yes, thank you. Um, okay. Just yeah. to make it clear that these reports we're talking about relate to the the reviews of shootings and deaths in custody, and that's and it's important to call that out. So, um, just so uh, all you media, I'll let yep. you do yeah, the I have to seal the deal <laughs> for you guys. Okay, so is there any strong opposition to the addition of the words "deadly force" to this section um, of this this particular section? No. Is there general agreement of the addition of these words? Okay, wonderful. Thank you very much. And then we'll go um, move on back to yeah, down back to whatever B we were going to. Yeah, B3, raw, data. raw data. Yeah. Okay. B three raw data. Raw data shall be available for download, inspection, and analyses by members of the public. Publishing raw data on a regular basis promotes transparency and public confidence in both the law enforcement and civilian oversight agencies. Raw data shall include complaints, intake decisions, closure reasons, findings, discipline, complainant demographics, and complaint geographies. Data sharing shall adhere to standards that prioritize the protection of personal identifiable information of the complainant and applicable community members. Raw data available for download shall include an appendix describing data sources, data definitions, and other pertinent contextual information. The board will publicly report its findings, conclusions, and recommendations coming out of misconduct case hearings. Okay, any questions, additions, suggestions about this particular section? Okay, it doesn't seem like there is. Okay, so I'll just ask the ceiling questions. Are there any proposed text changes to this section, which is B3? Okay, I see no. All right, so we'll move on to the next section after our break. Okay. I'll give you 10 minutes. So we'll come back at 7.32. Thank you, Ayumide. We are back from our break. And we're just waiting for the screen share to come back up. Thank you, staff. And we were at section. <clears throat> B4. Okay, so next um, is uh, dashboards. In interactive dashboards shall be developed around the oversight data so that it can be visualized in different ways. Dashboards may display case statistics, open, closed statuses, sustained allegations, findings, and discipline. Dashboards shall provide filters to disaggregate data by race, ethnicity, geography, and other important categories 
to offer a nuanced look at the data. Communication through data dashboards shall prioritize accessibility and usability. When applicable, the board and or staff shall provide technical assistance, trainings or webinars to help understand the data. And then this is where we put that uh, footnote to that Seattle uh, dash, uh, policy tracker. So as an inspiration for our next uh, oversight system. Any questions, additions, ideas for changing this? I don't see any note. Are there any proposed text changes for this section B4? Okay. Um, can we move on to the B5? Yes. Right. Okay, so next B5 accessibility. Any communication offered by the oversight board shall be written accessibly. Communication shall prioritize sharing with the public in language that is as clear and simple as possible. While language will be clear and concise, it will not come at the expense of omitting essential details. When appropriate, communication shall follow best practice in inclusive writing, which can be referenced in the Office of Equity and Human Rights Writing Guide. And you see there's a, a footnote for that. Populations, um, must most at risk of harm at the hands of police shall be prioritized in communication that is culturally specific, relevant, and easily digestible. These priority populations include, but are not limited to, people experiencing mental illness, people with disabilities, Black, Indigenous, and people of color. Any suggestions, additions, changes to this particular section? I just don't see any opposition. And so I'm going to ask, are there any proposed changes? Is this section all of section eight, uh, B5? I just want to make sure. Wonderful. Thank you. Are there any proposed text changes to this section B5? Okay. Can we move on to B6? All right. We're moving on to B6. <clears throat> okay. Confidentiality. The director, when requested, shall protect the confidentiality of complainants, members, or witnesses consistent with the requirements of open Oregon public records law, except insofar as disclosures may be necessary to enable the director to carry out their duties or to comply with applicable collective bargaining agreements, or the disclosure of records is directed by the district attorney. When considering a request for public records, the director shall consult with appropriate bureau personnel and obtain approval from the bureau prior to disclosure of records under the Oregon public records law. And then the right underneath the board can propose the release of otherwise confidential information. Okay, any uh, questions, concerns? Well, support staff has a question, but I think probably Christian, let's go first and then I'll have support staff speak. Um, I was just curious. I know that we have had this flagged um, from seat by that comment from seem up for a while. Um, are we confirming it today? And that we'll just go through with that comment. Mm -hmm. Sorry, that was the end of my question. I'm just asking if we, if we confirm it today, will that comment stay with it? <laughs> oh, um, yeah, I guess we should ask the staff. It seems like since uh, CMOG isn't here, um, it would be nice to, you know, take it to the full committee. I mean, hopefully we don't have to have another com subcommittee <laughs> meeting, but, um, you know, maybe we can address that uh, and, and kind of, I don't know what, does that, I don't know if anybody remembers what additional legal information he was CMO was wondering about. Um, it looks like um, when would a disclosure be necessarily necessary to enable the director to carry out this du this duty or its duties was one of the things that he added. Um, and it's just it just says flag for further discussion. 
Um, let's see. Um, there is a, a, also a public comment, but um, staff, go ahead and. Yeah, so the, the question was about, uh, it was exactly as stated, it, that it was about when would a disclosure be necessary. And I, my understanding is that the um, the response is the best information that we have on that. The, the public comment from uh, commission member Dan, who was given public comment because he's a member of the commission, but not of the subcommittee. Um, but yeah, the, the, that, 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 that there's no additional information that, that we've come across yet. Um, we do not have legal counsel today at this meeting. So this is something that we could definitely bring back up at the, um, uh, full commission uh, after it's referred. So if if that's uh, something that Commissioner Christian's suggestion might be something that the that the subcommittee agrees with, it'd be fine to simply flag this as it goes. Um, we can, um, what, what we've done historically with this is just kind of highlight it and um, note it and, and try to get uh, an answer to the question between the, the subcommittee referral and the full commission. And then it looks like uh, one of uh, Commissioner Christian's comments on here of um, what are the limits of transparency? I think that was another question that was also in there as well. Yeah, so th this this section is the section on limits of transparency, effectively. It just it, as opposed to saying it that way, it's set, set, a, set as a confidentiality. Okay, um, I'm just reading the the little the side notes. There's that there was more than yeah. Yeah, and then there is something on this this last part. It's not simply generic, and, and it actually relates to um, the first of the two uh, items in the in the Q and A right now. So this was flagged for further discussion because the way it's written um, implied to I, I can't recall which subcommittee member um, that it was uh, that the director would need to obtain approval from the bureau prior to disclosure of records, as opposed to you know, narrowing that in some way. And so the Q&A says consult with the Bureau if it is their document, meaning if the custodian, custodian of record of that record is the um, um, police bureau. So that, that's what the, that comment was and why this sentence was flagged for further discussion. So that if subcommittee members would like to change that, they can. Okay, I think you might have misunderstood what I was talking about um, when I was looking at the other comment from Christian. It was like, I think you were, and maybe you can uh, clarify, um, Commissioner Christian, the limits of, like, were you talking about time limits of transfer, of like, of the confidentiality? No, um, I, I was, uh, not Just, time limits. I was, I was talking about, if I remember correctly, I was thinking about um, like laws that might, prevent us from being fully transparent okay like Thank limitations you. that are not within the uh oversight board's control that might force us to not be able to be fully transparent because their structures around us are still not fully transparent unfortunately <laughs> okay i just wanted to make sure no. um staff yeah that that uh i think this section that's highlighted is is the the carve out for i see yeah okay Thank you. Yeah. And then it's not, it's going to show as highlighted uh, when we send it along. I don't know why it's not currently showing as highlighted. Yeah. Samir, I kind of had a feeling this whole section came from someplace. Is it, was this from the IPR code, do you know? Yes, um, it's from, we have it cited somewhere. Um, Does it be interesting to find out what the source is? You know, um, maybe we should find that and put the footnote in um, of, of where it came from. Because uh, I was thinking if it's already in the city code, it might be, um, you know, it might be easier to think that it's a good idea to, stick with this. It does refer to Oregon public records law, so that maybe is a bit of a giveaway.
it might be under the uh, uh, PSS, the um, Portland policy document, which is issued by the. I the sure didn't look at those. I don't know if anybody else did. Okay, well, um, I, so this looks like this section is flagged for further discussion. So, okay, I was going to say, I don't know what to do with it. So, <laughs> uh, uh, so find out where it came from would be a good first step. So, I maybe I can go back to the you know, to our, our early version and see if I can find it. Okay, so I suppose move on, just move on and leave this the way it is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, there, there was a proposal on it though, um, which was to the the Q and A proposal. So I'm not sure if that was of interest to we just mention it. it. It doesn't have to be resolved now, but it could be. Oh, um, and um, oh, it looks like right. oh, I'm sorry. Oh no, go ahead if you want to read it. That's fine. oh, I, I was going to say I think that. What what Dan first wrote when he said B six, he really meant B four. Because see the one underneath it, it says B4. So I was trying to type before it was confirmed. That's referring to one of the uh the wonder if the recommendation the, the wonder if the recommendation dashboard should be in the body text for the new board. That's referring to a, a different one. Okay, so but that's above we've already got done. We should go backwards and look at number B4 though. All words. Yeah, but but the B6 one is is about B6. Oh, it is. Okay. Should say consult with bureau if it is their oh document. Okay, so that's what you were talking about, Samir. Yeah. Okay, so should we insert that though? Does that make if it is their on so with that last sentence, then we should make it clear that they would need to they should consult with the bureau personnel if it's something owned by the bureau. Is that what is that right? Yeah, it would be something like. So maybe we should take out Oregon public records law and say, oh, no, that looks good what you just did. When considering a request for public records, the director shall consult with appropriate bureau personnel and obtain approval from the bureau prior to disclosure of PPP records. Should it say as required by Oregon Public Records Law? Okay. Okay. That's, okay. Oh, good, Christian. You think it, may, it finally makes sense? Maybe good. <laughs> okay. All right. Yay. All right. So then, since there is a proposed change on the floor, um, is there any strong opposition to? the changing of, or the addition to PPB P, 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 records as required under the port, the Oregon public records law. Is there any strong opposition? Is there general agreement to changing this section? Okay, fantastic. Thank you. <clears throat> hmm. Well, then should we go back and deal with B4 before we get out of the Bs? Okay, so the, let me see what the comment says. Uh, maybe it should explicitly say the new board should say there will be a dashboard of the recommendations. Uh, okay. Interactive dashboards. So where would you say that? Um, The board shall the board, the board will authorize board will direct creation of interactive dashboards. Um, let's see. <laughs> um, we could um, wait till public comment, and and maybe by then. Uh, 
Commissioner Dan maybe could give us uh, some the language he'd like to suggest on B6 for B4 before I need. Okay, that 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 seems okay. What what you just wrote, staff. Samir. So the board may also display policy recommendations in a dashboard. Okay. Just mirroring the language of here that the group has already talked about. So okay. All right, good. <laughs> Okay, that's good. I like it. How about you, Christian and Connie? Oh, okay, good. All right. Well, it sounds like um, there's no general opposition and there's general agreement for the language that has been inserted. The board may also display policy recommendations in a dashboard. And just for to to be transparent about it, we'll move the uh, the footnote related to the Seattle policy recommendation dashboard down from the header to that sentence as well. Excellent. Okay, so can we move on from B, uh, B4 to now B, I think we are in B6. Oh, we, oh, do we need to, okay. We already, we already did that part. So we're just going to B6. We approved that area. Okay, peace. We already approved this as well. <laughs> Do that first. So, what? Okay, so are we ready for this one? Oh no, the word. We did. We, we talked about that one. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. So we're going to the next section. Okay. Excellent. Can we move on? I I did ask that. Can we move on to B? Oh, B. Okay. Oh, is B C? I just didn't know what letter we were on. What, 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 where we were at. So we are at C, no B7, just C. Okay, yes. Yeah. C, information distribution and community engagement. Agency staff and board members will widely distribute complaint forms in languages and formats accessible to the public, provide education on the importance of reporting complaints, and hold public meetings to hear general concerns about police and agency services. Police Bureau <laughs> member business cards distributed to community members during police actions and encounters will include oversight agency contact information so the public will know where to file complaints. So just so you know, that's already required, that thing about the business cards, but I thought it might be a good idea to mention it again. Okay, anybody have any questions or comments or additions or subtractions to this section? Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, is there um, any uh, any proposed changes for this section's text or any for this text in section C? Okay, can we move on then to the next section? I'm not sure what it is. Okay. It's C1 okay. or D. <laughs> What do we got? We took care of that. Do are we supposed to read these things or, or... um staff has an answer for that? Yes. Oh, good. Neither C1 nor D. That is actually the end of the document. There is I this thought, uh, yeah. track changes section here to just just explain in the interest of transparency here. Um <clears throat> that uh this the there were some sections that were discussed and uh added in at previous times in the uh course of the subcommittee's discussion, um, but uh, this bottom one was moved up. They, they were both organized. So when you see, for example, this bottom one about written updates that ended up getting moved up and was already um, discussed uh, by the um, subcommittee today in, in A2. So that's why it's there and that's why it shows as, as being deleted because things were moved around. So that is actually the end of the document. There are... Um, I think there was one thing still flagged for uh, further discussion. I'm just trying to find it here. Oh, right. It's the highlighted section. Um, so this is part of the introductory, um, the introductory section. And this is a quote from um, the effectiveness section of the barriers and best practices document. So this is uh, was under the list of barriers. One of the barriers was effectiveness. 
Um, and this was part of the introductory sentence there. So in the event that the commission would like to, to keep it uh, in here, th there's just uh, this was flagged just because this part of it had not yet been discussed in terms of data indicating the impact made to accountability. And then um, also we need to put it in quotes and you know format it to be clear where it came from, that's all. So not certain, uh, I guess the, the question had been, does it, does it need to be in the document um, at all? Uh, because it was previously stated in the um, barriers and best practices document. Um, Co-chairs felt that if it was included, it should be included in this portion of it, uh, uh, you know, in this place, but not necessarily, um, there wasn't necessarily a, a consensus on where uh, or whether or not I should say to include it. And um, so it was flagged and highlighted to come back to at some point during this uh, meeting. And that's what's left. Um, I, I just a quick note on this. The the idea behind much of the areas of agreement is that, you know, the portions of it that will become code are obviously very relevant. And the portions of the, the explanatory text are more to help indicate to the public, to the city council, how the commission got to the eventual code recommendations and other recommendations that are made. Um, and so to that end, this will likely be sort of an appendix to um, the main report of the of the commission to the council, as will the fact finding phase documents. So the, there'd just be multiple appendices. So the question is, does it that that would be a reason not to have it, but then a reason to have it is if it needs to be specifically stated here to understand the rest of the document. Um, so it's up to the subcommittee, of course. Sorry, I'm talking and you can't hear me. Commissioner Christian, go ahead. Um, uh, I don't know that I have strong feelings one way or the other. Um, I don't know if that's helpful, but I just wanted to say my piece. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know if I have strong feelings one way or the other. We could move it or, or leave it in. I feel like it's fine either way, personally. Yeah, I'm in the same boat. Um, so I... I mean, there's no harm in leaving it. It doesn't seem it kind of it it gives further emphasis to the importance of transparency, <laughs> you know. So, you know, why not? <laughs> it doesn't take up that much space, and and you know, if there's a footnote saying where it came from, then that'll be you know helpful too. Um, staff, your hand was up too. Yeah, I just wanted to clarify that it would be kept in with that footnote and, and all that formatting. That's part of, um, you'll see in the the sort of question that the subcommittee will be asked about whether or not to refer it, it um, <laughs> would be to, um, you know, allow for co-chairs and staff to reformat and and make it, um, you know, fix typos and things like that. Um, and then also it can be left in, you know, as, as you said, in terms of leaving it as is, uh, co-chair Debbie, it, it, you know, items have been referred on highlighted as a thing that the full commission needs to address. So sort of a referral without recommendation, just up to the full commission instead of the subcommittee then. And then uh, uh, Commissioner Christian, your hand was up again. Yeah, sorry, I, I have a separate question about section C. Um, so, but, so not right now, just the, if, if this is, whenever this is resolved. <laughs> okay. So are there any proposed changes to this section? Um, Commissioner Jenny says no. Okay. All right. Um, I guess we can move to section C, the area that you had questions about. Cool, thank you. Um, could I uh, take one moment to reread it? Because uh, I, might, I might answer my own question. <laughs> yes. yes. Cool, one moment, thank you. Yes. Okay. So I do. I, my question does um, stand. I I remembered that in the um, uh, reports, what's to be included in the reports, we have a section that talks about how um, uh, um, 
the oversight board should report um, feedback it gets from the community from like outreach and stuff. Um, but in this section C where it says community engagement, I, I don't feel like there's an explicit bit that says that we will do outreach. I don't know if that would be something that we would need to put in for the subcommittee or if that's being covered somewhere else. I could be, I, I just was curious if it needed to be addressed here um, um, or if it's just sure. a given. Check the section. Let's check the section on the contents of annual reports. I kind of think it might be there. Well, let me double check. Don't don't believe me. <laughs> see that right under outreach. Let's see. Yeah, yeah. sorry. Yeah. Let me let me clarify. Um, the the this is what's going to be included in the report, correct? Yeah, that means that yeah. So there would be a little chapter in the annual report that says the outreach team. Did right for sure stuff. so yeah. so then my, my question then is that we don't need to I'm, I'm asking more than anything else we we don't need to explicitly state in the section c about community engagement that there will be an outreach team for example like we don't need to explicitly say like the the out the oversight board will have an outreach team which will conduct outreach throughout the time and that's where the information that would be put in the report at the end of the year or at the end of whatever quarter or whatever to council um on, i see what you're saying yeah yeah that that's my question because i don't think it's explicitly stated but i don't know if it needs to be explicitly stated i i don't see a harm in putting it in personally but i just wanted to posit that to the group as a last so thing i wonder if the other two subcommittees who were in this phase of work are going to be covering what the board and agency do in terms of community engagement and outreach right. And that's why I was asking too, because yeah. I don't know if someone else might be and saying possibly it. Possibly our staff knows the answer to that question. Yeah. Yep, and their hand is raised. So go ahead, staff. Yeah, um, that's uh, <laughs> in the subcommittee on oversight staff. Um, the responsibility to 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 do that. It, it's also um, uh, something that that kind of highlights it. So that this particular section, um, the second part of it is uh, from the city code on. IPR right now. So it's interesting. It's it's under IPR code. Let me just move this over uh, under intake. Um, and it's this last part um, here. And it, it's a, a way of of indicating how, you know, part how intake can be done basically is is in here. And that doesn't necessarily have to be how it's organized when the proposed code is crafted by the commission, but that's where it comes from. Um, just as a reference point. Um, and so haven't yet cross-checked this against uh, the officer accountability document to be sure that it's not already in there. Um, and then in terms of um, the complaint forms, that is based off of the same section of code, uh, just lower down under increasing public access. So you can see languages and that this was updated um, in a previous uh, conversation of the commission somewhere and um but that's where it originates from so um that's why it's it where where it came from but then also yeah the the um even this to some degree just distributing it is is um sort of a responsibility of under um probably would be under officer accountability but um can can also go here in terms of being transparent about how, how and uh, where to submit Thank you for that. Thank you. So are there any proposed changes to this section of the text then? Okay. Um, I guess, can we move on to the next section? So I guess staff were, you said that we were done with the document at this time. Just wanna make sure. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> Wonderful. That's awesome. Okay, so um, the subcommittee has completed discussion on this document, and next on the agenda is discussing whether the subcommittee should refer the document to the full commission with all the changes we've made today incorporating incorporated into, text, into the text. There is a potential agreement document that was circulated that gives some context as to the decision as to this decision it is it also says that co-chairs and staff would be authorized to fix some of the formatting typo formatting and typos prior to full commission consideration before seeing if there is consensus around referring this document 
we're going to hear from the public. After that, we'll ask if members want to make a make any final tweaks, and then ask if they are ready if they are ready to make a decision. So we'll go to public comment. We ask members of the public to keep their comments to three minutes in length and keep their comments focused on the draft document. You can raise your hand in Zoom if you'd like to be called on. Let's see here. Okay, it looks like it was just Commissioner Handelman. So go ahead. Oh, good evening. Thank you. Hi, uh, this is Dan Handelman. I use he, him pronouns. I am a commissioner of the PAC, and uh, I appreciate all the work that you're doing. I also appreciate you taking my uh, couple of suggestions in the Q&A <laughs> tonight. Very nice. Um, uh, in the introduction, right after the part you were just discussing for a second time, um, there's a thing uh, from, that's quoting from the council resolution, and there's a section about um, the organizational details that I think is just superfluous. I mean, the important part is that section number seven. So I would just say in the in the sentence leading up to that, in the organizational details part of what the city council asked us to do, they said, and they go to number seven. I just think the, the leaner we can make our documents, the better. Um, I see that there was some comment about replacing the word agency with something else. There are lots of places where I think the word agency could just be replaced by the word board staff, and you know, maybe that's something the co-chairs can work with the staff on between now and when it goes to the full commission. Um, in the part, uh, and I, I failed to flag which subsection this is in, where, but where the uh, part about the director making a report about the monthly uh, or about the data on a regular basis to the board um, that staff pointed out was moved up. Um, Commissioner Iona knows this, that the current uh, IPR month, monthly reports to the CRC are more detailed than just those data. So I'm going to put a, a sample of an old uh, IPR director's report in the into the Q&A. Um, it was very hard to find because it's in the, on the old website of the city. But um, the point is, I think it should say, uh, in, in addition to the, uh, the data about the in investigations, it should say, and other relevant updates about the board and staff. Um, that's my suggestion. I guess I can put that in the Q&A also. Uh, and finally, I, uh, in terms of Commissioner Oriana Bowers' uh, concern about the confidentiality, uh, limiting, um, transparency, maybe the subsection of B6 could be called confidentiality slash limits of transparency. And then that way you get that concept uh, in writing there. Okay, thank you again very much. Thank you, Commissioner Handelman, for your questions. Um, okay, I don't see any other Anyone else asking any questions? Okay, so I, I have a question if nobody else in the public has anything. Nope, no one else does. Okay. So I think it would be a good idea, and I didn't write them down, I hope maybe um, our staff member did, to go back and address the things that Commissioner Dan brought up. Because I feel like we're done early, ready to address these things now, because otherwise we're going to be addressing them at the full PAC meeting. Uh, and then we might end up, you know, being there till 10 o'clock. So, um, so just a thought, uh, uh, Commissioner Christian, what do you think about that idea about doing it now? Okay. That's fine with me. Yeah. All right. So Samir, did you happen to write down those things? So before we do that, I just oh, want to. Oh, sorry. Yeah, sorry. I didn't mean, I didn't mean nope, to. It's ask okay. <laughs> no, nope, you've asked the question. That's a great question. And I just want to first, before we move on from public comment, I wanted to make sure that no one else um, had any other comments or questions um, at this time here. Just raise your hand in the QA. Uh, raise your hand on Zoom if you do. Okay, just wanted to double check that to make sure. Um, okay, so, and then yeah, I so, guess we should go on to your request then. 
there are, there are two uh, spots that are fairly specific in here that we'll do uh, up front. So there's um, here, uh, which was in the introduction section, um, and it was defined in its organizational details. Uh, and then to remove this portion of the uh, quote, the excerpt. So that's one, and then we can go to the other one, which is um, a little bit further down, eight two, I think. Um, does but a member of would a member of the subcommittee like to propose doing that change? Yeah, that's what I was just about to ask. Um, so are we on? Um, which one are we on right now? This is Speaking the intro. Oh, the intro. Oh, I would like to suggest doing what you just did. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Okay. So in terms of there is now another uh, track change on the floor and it looks like it is um, the deletion of a section organized details. It's just the, the organized organizational detail appointed of Appointment of a director and professional staff are required by the charter amendment. Other details are required about how the system will be set up. So is there a general opposite? Is there any any strong opposition to the removal of this quote or this definition from this section? Okay. Is there a general agreement to changing this? All right. Fantastic. And then the, the next one down um, is under A2, and it's the second section here, and it's um, and other relevant updates about the board and staff would be that that's the, the suggested change, but it still needs to be proposed with, or adapted. Yeah, I'd like to make that suggestion. Wonderful. Okay. Is there general, is there any strong opposition to the addition of and other relevant updates about the board and staff to this section A2? Is there general agreement? Okay. Fantastic. And then is, is there another, is there any other changes that need to be addressed? Can There's we... another one. Um... <laughs> Uh, did you get, uh, in many places, agency could be listed as staff or board staff. Yeah, uh, so this is a. That's something you could just do as a, as a whatever, you know. Yeah, I mean, at some, at some point in this <laughs> process, it's actually in the next phase of work. So the, the commission has been generically using agency to refer to um, the grouping of staff that ultimately report to a director that reports to the oversight board. And that comes from the fact finding phase to have a term because in different cities, it has different names. Um, and so there, there was the oversight body and the oversight agency were the two terms used back in, in the summer of 2022. So there is a place on the agenda and scope document of the PAC coming up where um, naming the entity is, is on that. And uh, that's that's going to be um, in the next phase of work, the fifth phase. So it, it could be renamed. It, it, it could not. It, it's not. I just wanted to. The, the, I'm, I'm responding because this is a comment we made at the beginning that this uh, it, it's an essentially an interim word. Um, the subcommittee could pick a second interim word, like if if, if you'd like, um, or in the fifth phase of work, there'll be an actual name for this entity. Um, I'm totally okay with just leaving it as it is. And then the last one, but what are uh, Christian and Connie, what do you guys think? Are you okay with just leaving the words that they are now and deal with it later? That's fine with me. It sounded like that made sense. Okay. And Connie seems to agree. Okay. Then the last item is the one that addresses uh, Commissioner Christian thing about the um, limits of transparency, adding that to the um, headline for B6. So I'd like to suggest that. That sounds great. Right. I think we've addressed all those now. 
Oh, I mean, I know we have to finish. No, yep, you have to do the whole. Yeah, no, go for it. <laughs> yep. Is there any strong op opposition to the addition of limits of transparency to Section B6? Is there general agreement to adding this change to B6? All right, we are good to go. <laughs> and we move on now. Yes. Okay, there we go. <clears throat> okay. Let's see. All right. We did that already. Okay, and I'll just ask one more time. Would any of the members of the sub um, sub subcommittee like to revisit any portion of the draft areas of agreement? Okay, I'm not seeing anybody. Okay, so now we're gonna go to the big magical questions. Is there any strong opposition to referring the draft areas of agreement to the full PAC for consideration? Okay, I see no's here. Is there general agreement around referring the draft areas of agreement to the full pack for their consideration? And I see lots of yeses. So, okay. The co the co the co chairs have indi oh rope wrong okay we're 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 good <laughs> yay congratulations you have consensus <clears throat> uh let's see there is consensus and this is referred thank you so much commissioners just wanted to make sure that i got all that yep um Okay, I think we will pass it over to staff for next steps. Am I correct? Yeah, thank you. Um, so congratulations to the subcommittee. You have completed your work. So the very first thing that needs to be stated is that there will not be a meeting of the subcommittee on Tuesday, March 28th, as it is not required um, because the subcommittee has referred the document on. Um, this document will be circulated uh, to the full commission, which will be able to start considering it um, at its March 30th meeting. It is on the March 30th full commission agenda. Um, so that will uh, be the first time that the, the full PAC can dis start discussing it. Um, <clears throat> There is another item on that agenda as well that the full commission needs to discuss. So I'm not sure exactly how much time it'll it'll have on there, but it'll be one of the items under consideration. And that's really the only next step for this subcommittee. Um, just wanted to take the opportunity to definitively state that the, you may have noticed that the timeline changed in, uh, the information about it at the beginning. So the city council did um, uh, change the PAC's deadline to August 31st. Um, and so that's when uh, the the, all of the phases of work will need to be complete. And just wanted to highlight that while um, I have the floor. So I'll pass it back over to the facilitators. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So we will take general public comment at this time um, on the issues of the subcommittee is discussing, or if community members also have a story to tell about policing or police accountability, Subcommittee now allows members of the public to give public comment for th up to three minutes in length. Please raise your hand in Zoom if you'd like to speak. Okay, I guess we are now moving on to our conclusion of the meeting. Um, um, we want to just, uh, oh, um, go to the garden plot to, this time is for facilitators and co-chairs and staff to summarize any items brought up today, which didn't fit in today's agenda. We'll recap those items here and use them for developing further agendas. We won't be using this time to add new items, not previously mentioned, or discuss any items, but we will 
use this last list to develop future agendas. And, and so these items can be addressed. So um, secondary facilitator first. Oh, well, actually staff has their hand up. Yeah, I just wanted to note the uh, legal uh, guidance request under the confidentiality limits of transparency section about um, when the director might be uh, required to disclose um, information that's otherwise oh, great. confidential. Thanks. Okay. Um, and uh, second facilitator. Corinne, do you have anything for the garden plot? Nope, thanks. Okay, and I do not either. Um, Co-chairs, anything that you can think of that you might want to add? Nope. Okay, wonderful. So um, I guess we can start to um, close out. Um, as a reminder, you can submit advance public notice to the Police Accountability, Accountability Commission in web form, voicemail, or postmail. Um, you can reach it at tinyurl.com backslash Portland, Portland PAC comments. The voicemail number is 503-832, or excuse me, 823-3346. And you can also do it by post and mail, Portland account, Portland, excuse me, Police Accountability Commission, City of Portland, Community Safety Division, PO Box 9065, Portland, Oregon 97207. Um, as a reminder, you can submit, submit um, advanced public comment to these three um, things. And thank you to all members who attended today's meeting and their uh, contributions. Thank you to the interpreters, commissioners again, thank you for your hard work. Um, finally, thank you for members of the, of the community for attending and contributing your questions and thoughts. Um, this meeting is adjourned and thank you very much today. <laughs>